In the previous movie, we used the Mash Toolkit to add our first HUD element and fix it to the camera. In this movie, we'll create additional HUD elements. You can either continue working from your previous file, or load the provided Mash UI Part 5 Start, provided in the link in the description. Let's start in the bottom left corner with this audio wave band. Before we begin, switch back to the default perspective camera view, so our vision isn't obscured by the resolution gate. Once again, we'll reuse our existing HUD cube, so select it and create a new MASH network. Rename it MASH HUD Audio. To create the audio wave, we'll use a row of cubes and scale them in Y according to an audio file's spectrum. The default distribution already gives us a good row of cubes, so let's just pull them a little closer to 5.5 units. Now we'll apply an audio node to the cube's scale values. Go to the New Audio tab. First set the Output mode to Multiply and disable Position and Rotation. Then load your own WAV or AFF file, or use the one included in the scene files below. Try playing the scene or scrubbing through the time slider. You should notice the cube scaling. You can adjust the level of scaling using the Scale Y attribute. Although we can see the effect of the audio on the cube scales, we can't actually hear the audio itself yet. To sync them, we just need to add an audio track via the Tracks Editor in Windows Animation Editor, Tracks Editor. From this editor, go to File Import Audio, then import the same file you used for the MASH network. You'll be able to see the audio as a track in the Tracks Editor, as well as overlaid onto the time slider. Now if you play back the scene, you can hear the audio driving the MASH network. Now we're ready to position it to the camera, just like we did the rotating grid in the previous movie. Start by adding the appropriate transform and transform controller nodes to the audio network. Now switch back to the HUD camera view. Positioning this HUD element will be a little easier than last time, since we can use our existing spinning grid as a point of reference. In the outliner, select the Audio Transform Locator, then Control select the Grid Transform 2 locator inside our hidden MASH HUD grid control group. Go to Modify, Match Transformations, Match Translations. This will place the audio locator exactly where the grid locator is. Now you can manually adjust the X and Y axes to position it in the bottom corner. And as before, select the HUD camera and control select the audio transform locator. Then in the animation menu set, go to Constrain, Parent. This will ensure the network moves along with the camera. With the audio done, let's move on to the bottom right corner where we see this radio wave-like pattern. This is actually a trigonometric function called a sine wave, which is another easy effect to create using MASH. First switch back to the default perspective camera. Now using our HUD cube, create a new MASH network from it and rename it MASH HUD Trig. In the Distribute tab, set the Distance X value to 6. Now we're ready to add a Signal node. If you try playing back the scene with the default settings, you'll notice that the Signal function doesn't look anything like we want. We'll have to make some adjustments. First set the Signal type to Trigonometry. Next, adjust the position values to 0 to 0. We only want the wave moving in the Y axis. Finally, set the step amount to 50 and noise scale to 0.1. This adjusts the frequency of the wave. Now if you play back the scene, you can see the wave is much closer to our desired look. However, it still only seems to be half the effect. You could create a second trig network that runs in the opposite direction, or you could just mirror this one. Go back to the waiter and create a symmetry node. In the Symmetry tab, change the axis of symmetry to Y. Now our wave looks complete.
Now position it to the HUD camera, just like you've done before, by creating a transform node and controller, switching back to the HUD camera, and using the match translations function to set up an initial position, before manually tweaking it to the bottom right corner. Don't forget to constrain it to the camera. We're almost done. We just need to create one last HUD item in the top right. Once again, start by creating a new MASH network from HUD Cube. Rename it MASH HUD Noise. Go to the Distribute tab and reduce the distance x value to zero so that all the points overlap. Now we're going to apply a signal node again, but this time we'll use it to move the cubes around randomly. If you play the scene, you'll notice that they're already moving a little bit, but we'll need to customize this movement from the Signal tab. Set the signal type to Looping Noise, then set position x, y, z to 3, 3, 0. This limits the cubes to moving 3 units in only x and y. In the Noise settings, set octaves to 6 and persistence to 10 to increase the frequency of the noise. Then set the time scale to 0.5 to slow the noise down. Rather than this smooth, floaty progression, we want the cubes to have a more 8 bit jumpy feeling to them. To do that, we'll add a Python script via the Python node. A Python script will allow us to further customize the movement. In this case, add the following lines under the for loop. By using the round function, we're telling MASH to round all noise positions to their nearest whole numbers. This will force the cubes to jump between non-decimal values rather than smoothly transitioning through them. Now you can add a transform node to position the effect in the HUD camera just like the rest. And of course, parent constrain it to the camera. That finishes up our camera UI. In the next movie, we'll show you how to output these effects to our finishing tool.